Hey, what's up students? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today I want to go through a pulley question which is going to involve some blocks. And the reason I really want to show you this is because it covers something that's a common misconception when we see blocks that are stacked on top of one another. It's going to do that as well as give us some practice on drawing free body diagrams and things like that. This is pretty much going to be good for the AP Physics 1 level, the SAT Physics level, and anybody else that's taking like an above average high school, maybe an honors level physics class, this would be something that you might see. So essentially it says that we have a drawing of box one resting on the table with box two resting on top of box one, a massless rope passes over a massless frictionless pulley. That's just so we don't have to worry about any forces or any torques being applied by the pulley. At one end of the rope is connected to box two. The other end is connected to box three. The weights of the three boxes are 55 newtons, 35 newtons, and 28 newtons. They want to determine the normal force that's being applied onto box one from the table. So essentially, I'm gonna start this problem with free body diagrams. This is gonna allow me to see what forces are acting on each box, and then I should be able to work backwards and solve. So I'm gonna start with box number one. Box number one has a mass, and everything that has a mass feels a force due to gravity downward. So I'm gonna call this the force due to gravity on box number one. And because it's touching this table, this table is gonna react by supporting that box with something that we call the normal force, the force of the normal. And that is essentially what we're trying to solve for in this problem. So this right here is gonna be what we're trying to solve for. Now there's other forces that are acting on this box and here is the misconception that I want you to really understand, so please pay attention. We know that there's a force that's coming from box two on to box one. Now the misconception is that everybody wants to label this the force of gravity of box number two. And students, that is incorrect, that is not true. Only you know what you feel like as far as weight is concerned. Only an object can feel its own weight. Think about something that's like sitting on top of you. And they say to you, I weigh 120 pounds. Well, you don't really know what 120 pounds feels like. You just know what it feels like to have another mass sitting on top of you. That's a force that box one feels from box two. So we are not gonna call this the force due to gravity on box two. This is actually gonna be a force of the normal that box two places on box one. Too many times I see that people just think the normal force points upward. That is not the case. It does always point perpendicular to the surface, but it can point down as well. So these are the three forces that are acting on box number one. So I put this in blue so we really understand that this is not FG2. If I look at box two now, once again, box two has a weight. This is FG2 because box two can feel its own weight, just like box one feels its own weight. Now box one responds to box two being on top of it with the force of the normal. This is a Newton's action-reaction force pair between box one and box two. This is the force of the normal that box one places on box two. So these forces right here and right here are action-reaction force pairs. But now there is another force that acts in the upward direction trying to pull this box, and that is the force of tension. Now if box three was on the ground at rest as well, there would be no tension force. There must be a pull for tension to exist. So usually when we see at rest, we have to be careful and see, but because there's gonna be forces acting and pulling this rope, there will be a tension force. So now let's look at that box number three and see the forces acting on it. Box three has a mass, and everything with a mass feels a force due to gravity, Fg3, and it has an upward force of tension. And we know that the force of tension is going to be equal everywhere on the rope. Does not matter what side of the pulley it's on, if it is one rope, the force of tension is going to be equal everywhere. The direction will be different because this is gonna feel a force of tension this way, and this one's gonna feel a force of tension this way. So if we were doing a standard Newton's second law question and this system was accelerating, then in fact, we would have to establish a direction of motion and these would be opposite directions, but the magnitude or amount of tension is equal everywhere. Now that I have my free body diagram set up, I can go back and look at my givens. And they give us the weights, the FGs for each one of these. So I can get rid of this and just write 55 Newtons. 
box two's weight is going to be 35 newtons, and box three's weight is going to be 28 newtons. Now, the other implied information that we have here is because this thing is at rest, A is going to be equal to zero meters per second squared, and F net on the system is going to be equal to zero newtons as well. So in this situation, when I look at F net, I have a downward force of 28. For F net to be equal to zero, the force of tension must also be equal to 28 newtons. That's the only way I can have an F net equal to zero newtons. So now we start to work our way backwards. So if this FT is equal to 28, and we know that FT is equal everywhere, I now can get rid of this and make this 28 newtons as well. And also, F net still needs to be equal to zero newtons. Therefore, if I have 35 newtons pointing downward, if I were to solve for F net, I would say 35 minus 28 minus F of the normal one puts onto two, that would allow me to solve for this value, which is going to be seven newtons. Now, because this is an action-reaction force pair, I now know this is equal to seven newtons as well. This has to be equal to F net, so now we can solve for this to be 62 newtons. That is the force that the table feels from one and two. And like I said, guys, I have to go back to this force of normal. If you took this as FG2, you would see that that would make this normal force completely different. This box does not have its entire mass pushing onto box one because box three is kind of like pulling it a little bit. So it's just like kind of dangling there. It's only pushing a little. Instead of pushing, with a weight of 35 newtons, which is the weight of FG2, it's only really pushing with seven newtons because box three is like lowering the amount of weight, the perceived weight that box two feels. So just remember, the force of a normal can be downwards as well, and that's why we're only gonna get 62 newtons. I hope this helped, guys. If it did, please give the video a thumbs up so the YouTube algorithm shares it with a bunch of other physics students that they can help as well. And until I see you guys on the next one, stay positive, keep working really, really hard, and always just, just be nice to other people. I'll catch you on the next one.